Today, we will be reading an adaptation of the book titled The Wind in the Willows and you will hear a chapter each lesson for the next few weeks. We will start with Chapter 1, The Riverbank, Part 1. Before we start the story, there are few vocabulary you should know. Backwater, noun. It means a peaceful body of water connected to a river, but with little or almost no current or movement, an isolated, unchanging village or town. Example. Mayberry was a quiet backwater of a village where people lived almost the same way as they had for the past hundred years. Bolted, verb. It means moved or ran off suddenly. Example. When it began raining, Evan bolted into his house to stay dry. Contemplated, verb. It means considered or thought about, pondered. Example. Thomas Edison contemplated all the ways electricity could be used in his inventions. Hesitating, adjective. It means in a halting or pausing way, acting with reluctance or uncertainty. Example. Julia perched on the side of the pool in a hesitating position as she waited for the rest of the class to jump in. Interferes, verb. It means gets in the way and prevents something from working smoothly. Example. During the spring season, rain often interferes with outdoor plans. Meandered, verb. It means moved slowly and without purpose. Example. Jules meandered down the beach in the early morning light, enjoying the scenery. Willows are a type of trees. Look at this picture, this is one type of willow tree. There are many types of willows, and these particular ones are weeping willow trees. Willows like a lot of water, and therefore tend to grow near sources of water such as rivers, lakes, and ponds. The story we are going to hear is fiction. What does the term, fiction, refer to? If a story is fiction, it is created from the author's imagination. The Wind in the Willow was written in 1908, more than 100 years ago and it is considered one of the best children's stories ever written. This story you are going to hear is of a high quality and has remained well known throughout the years, it is known as a classic. Have you read any stories that are considered classics? You probably have heard or read few books such as Charlotte's Web, Alice in Wonderland, The Chronicles of Narnia, Where the Wild Things Are, or A Wrinkle in Time. These books are just a few examples of many classic books. The story, The Wind in the Willows, was written by a man named Kenneth Graham. Kenneth Graham was born in Scotland, but moved to England when he was very young, and lived there the rest of his life. Scotland and England are two of the four countries making up the United Kingdom, the UK for short. Along with Wales and Northern Ireland, citizens of the UK are called British, because the main landmass of the UK is called Great Britain. Graham told these stories to his son whom he called Mouse to entertain him before he ever wrote them down. This story is set in the English countryside, where the author grew up, near a river called the Thames. The Thames River runs through the country of England. Remember, the United Kingdom is considered part of the continent of Europe. Therefore, the story is written in British English. In the United States, most people speak American English. British English and American English are very similar, but there are some slight differences in words or phrases. For example, in Today Read Aloud, you will hear about a character who is messing about in a boat. What they think it means to be messing about. In American English, we might say messing around instead of messing about. 
In both cases, it means that the character is not doing anything on the boat with a particular purpose. This map shows many of the places described in The Wind in the Willows. The story begins between Mole's house and the riverbank. As we read farther into the story, we will hear about many of the places you see on the map. The story you are going to hear for the next few weeks is about animal characters living near a river and woods, forest. The main character are a mole, a water rate, European water vole, a badger, and a toad. What do you see on the riverbank? A girl, badger, toad, rat, and back of a mole. Can you think of a story you have heard previously in which an animal or an object talks and acts like a person? We have read one just recently, Bruno's New Home. In Bruno's New Home, how did the bear behave like a person? He read a books to learn just like we did. When an animal or thing in a story behaves or is described like a person, it is called personification. Repeat after me, personification. What would do you hear inside the word personification? The word person is inside of personification, and personification is when an animal or thing is given the characteristics of a person, such as talking, wearing clothes, and even reading a book. Can animal talk using words in real life? Do animals in nature wear clothes? You will hear about things in the wind in the willows that cannot happen in real life, such as animal talking, wearing clothes, and living in real houses. Often when a story has these elements, this type of fiction is called fantasy. Throughout the book, you will hear about other animals that are examples of personification. You will also see these main animal character interact with other animals that act as they would in nature. Throughout this lessons, you should listen for examples of animals that are personified and animals that are not personified. Remember, the plot of a story is what we call the events of the story in which the characters are involved. And the location and time period of a story is called the setting. And dialogue is what we call the parts of the story where the characters speak to one another. Let's get started with the story. The mole had been working very hard all the morning spring cleaning his little home, first with brooms, then with dusters, then on ladders and steps and chairs, with a brush and a pail of whitewash. Whitewash is a special solution made of limestone and water, used like paint to whiten walls or other things. He did this until he had dust in his throat and eyes, and splashes of whitewash all over his black fur. Spring was moving in the air above and the earth below, and around him and his dark and lowly little house. Any wonder he suddenly flung down his brush on the floor, said, Bother, and, oh blow, and also, hang spring cleaning, and bolted out of the house without even waiting to put on his coat. Bother, oh blow, and, hang, are examples of British sayings that show someone doesn't like something, similar to how an American would say, oh snap, or, forget about it. Mole immediately made for the steep little tunnel, and without a moment's hesitation, he began scraping, scratching, and scrabbling. He worked busily with his little paws and muttered to himself, up we go. Up we go, till at last, pop. His snout came out into the sunlight, and he found himself rolling in the warm grass of a great meadow. This is fine, he said to himself. This is better than whitewashing, he added as he jumped with delight at the joy of spring. In this state of happiness, he made his way across the meadow till he reached the hedge on the farther side. It all seemed too good to be true, as moving hither and thither he observed everywhere birds building, and leaves and flowers bursting forth. He thought his happiness was complete when, as he meandered aimlessly along, he came to the edge of a full-fed river. There he stood quite mesmerized, as never before had he seen a river. He watched in awe as it shimmered and shined, gurgled and burbled, swirled and curled its way seaward. So bewitched and fascinated was he, that he trotted for a while by the side of it. Eventually, exhausted by this tremendous effort, he sat down on the bank to rest. 
As he sat on the grass and gazed across the river, a dark hole in the bank opposite, just above the water's edge, caught his eye. Mole quietly contemplated what a nice snug dwelling place it would make. As he gazed, something bright and small seemed to twinkle like a tiny star down in the heart of it. But it could hardly be a star, and it was too glittering and small for a glowworm. Look at this picture, this is a glowworm. A glowworm is a type of wingless beetle that creates and gives off a bright light. The beetles that have wings are called fireflies or lightning bugs. Then, as he looked, it winked at him, and so revealed itself to be an eye, and a small face began gradually to grow up round it, like a frame round a picture. A brown little face, with whiskers. A grave round face, with the same twinkle in its eye. Small neat ears and thick silky hair. It was the water rat. The two animals stood and regarded each other cautiously. Hello, mole, said the water rat. Hello, rat, said the mole. Would you like to come over? inquired the rat. Oh, it's all very well to ask, said the mole, rather grumpily, he being new to a river and riverside life and its ways. Who's how do you see in the pictures? The rat said nothing, but stooped and unfastened a rope and hauled on it, then lightly stepped into a little boat which the mole had not observed. It was painted blue outside and white within, and was just the size for two animals, and the mole loved it immediately. The rat sculled across. The word sculled here has to do with rowing a boat with two oars, and it begins with the letters, S-C. Don't confuse it with the word skull, as in the head of a skeleton, which begins with the letters, S-K. Then he held up his forepaw as the mole stepped gingerly down. Lean on that, he said. Now then, step lively. And the mole to his great delight found himself actually seated in the stern of a real boat. The word, stern, means the rear. This has been a wonderful day, said he, as the rat shoved off and took to the skulls again. Do you know, I've never been in a boat before in all my life. What? cried the rat, open-mouthed. Never been in a, you never, well I, what have you been doing, then? Is it so nice as all that? asked the mole shyly, though he was quite prepared to believe it as he leant back in his seat and surveyed the cushions, the oars, and all the fascinating fittings. Nice? It's the only thing, said the water rat solemnly, as he leant forward for his stroke. Believe me, my young friend, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, half so much worth doing as simply messing about in boats. Simply messing, he went on dreamily. Messing, about, in, boats, messing, look ahead, rat, cried the mole suddenly. It was too late. The boat struck the bank full tilt. The oarsman lay on his back at the bottom of the boat, his heels in the air. The oarsman is the, man, with the oars. Who is the oarsman in this case? About in boats, or with boats, the rat went on cheerily, picking himself up with a pleasant laugh. In or out of them, it doesn't matter. Look here, if you've really nothing else to do, what do you say we spend time on the river together? The mole waggled his toes from sheer happiness, spread his chest with a sigh of contentment, and leaned back blissfully into the soft cushions. What a day I'm having, he said. Let us start at once. Hold on a minute, then, said the rat as he tied fast the boat and climbed up into his hole above. Moments later he reappeared staggering under a fat, wicker, luncheon basket. Shove that under your feet, he said to the mole, as he passed it down into the boat. Then he untied the boat and took the skulls again. What's inside it? asked the mole, eagerly. There's cold chicken inside it, replied the rat. Cold tongue, cold ham, cold beef, pickled gherkins, salad, French rolls, cress sandwiches, potted meat, ginger beer, lemonade, soda water. Oh stop, stop, cried the mole. This is too much. Do you really think so? inquired the rat seriously. It's only what I always take on these little excursions. The other animals complain that I hardly have enough. The mole did not hear a word he said. He was already absorbed in the new life he was entering upon. He trailed a paw in the water and dreamed long, waking dreams. The water rat, like the good little fellow he was, sculled steadily on and did not disturb him. 
I like your clothes, old chap, the rat remarked after some half an hour or so had passed. I'm going to get a velvet jacket myself someday. Old chap is British slang for a man, boy, or fellow. I beg your pardon, said the mole, pulling himself together with an effort. You must think me very rude, but all this is so new to me. So, this, is, a, river. The river, corrected the rat. And you really live by the river? What a jolly life. By it and with it and on it and in it, said the rat. It's brother and sister to me, and aunts, and company, and food and drink, and, naturally, washing. It's my world, and I don't want any other. But isn't it a bit dull at times? The mole asked. Just you and the river, and no one else to pass a word with? No one else to, well, I mustn't be hard on you, said the rat. You're new to it. The bank is so crowded nowadays that many people are moving away altogether. Oh no, it isn't what it used to be, at all. Otters, kingfishers, dab chicks, moorhens, all of them about all day long and always wanting you to do something, as if a fellow had no business of his own to attend to. This is a picture of an otter, the story mention. Kingfisher on the top left, moorhens on the top right, and dab chicks on the bottom two pictures. What lies over there? asked the mole, waving a paw towards a background of woodland that darkly framed the water meadows on one side of the river. W-E-L-L, -L, replied the rat hesitantly, that's the wild wood. We don't go there too often. Are there scary creatures there? Mole asked, trying not to tremble. The squirrels are all right, Rat replied. And the rabbits, some of them, but rabbits are a mixed lot. And then there's Badger, of course. He lives right in the heart of it, wouldn't live anywhere else, either. Dear old Badger, nobody interferes with him. Why, who should interfere with him? Asked the Mole. Well, of course, there are others, explained the Rat in a hesitating sort of way. Weasels, stoats, foxes, and so on. They're all right in a way. I'm very good friends with them. Past the time of day when we meet, but you can't trust them, and that's a fact. Look at these three animals, weasels, stoats, and foxes. You will learn more about these animals in a later read aloud. And beyond the wild wood? Mole asked. Beyond the wild wood is the wide world, said the rat. And that's something that doesn't matter, either to you or me. I've never been there, and I'm never going, nor you either, if you've got any sense. Don't ever refer to it again, please. Now then, here's our backwater at last, where we're going to lunch. A backwater is a peaceful body of water connected to a river, but with little or almost no current, or movement. You will hear about mole and rat's picnic lunch on the backwater in the next read aloud.